How you doing everybody? Hope everybody's well. It's Sunday, it's the 14th of November 2010 and uh, it's been sort of late, late in the morning and uh, I was out earlier getting newspapers and I bought an English newspaper and an Irish newspaper and both of them are basically the same things on the front cover and I'll show you the English newspaper again already, it's that Daily Mail rag thing, okay? And you see that there, look there's it there. Can you read that? Basically says, ask us for 60 billion bailout now or just EU banks. And I put a link to the Irish Independent and they basically, their front thing is, they basically cover it to a much, in a much in more indirect, you know, look at the Irish show. They never talk about A, they're always talking about the backside of A. Well, that's what, that's what this uh, Irish Independent article is, an impoverished article. But it's basically trying to deal with the same thing. Um, basically what's going on is, uh, the situation is a lot worse than any of us believed. What's going to happen is we're going to have to go to other European banks who will be ordered by the EU. Essentially this is what's going to happen. This is why Oli Wren was here. What's going to happen is the EU will order, essentially, other banks, German, French and Italian banks, or whoever has the money, to loan us between 60 and 80 billion. Now, how it's all going to be done, I don't know. But the fallout's going to be the same. The fallout essentially is going to be the Europeans will own our state. De facto, de jure, no matter what way you look at it, we're a defunct, insolvent, stroke, bankrupt state. That's what we are. And... Uh, this is going to lead on to the second thing that I'm going to deal with. That's the reason why I'm opening with it. But uh, it's just it's just sad. The whole I think the whole thing is incredibly sad. And the sooner we have a general election, the better. I think if we don't have a general election, there's going to be serious, serious and widespread civil unrest in the country. There's a lot of anger out there, a lot of pent-up anger. People know basically what's going on. People know essentially... What, what caused this and what brought this about. These Fianna Fáil incompetent criminal types brought this about. And them and their banker friend, their bankster friends and their speculator friends brought all this about. So when you add the whole thing all up, we own a colossal amount of money to Europe. And in order to get the money and in order to be able to pay it back, etc, etc, etc. They're just basically going to take Ireland. They, they eventually, what what has happened essentially is what has what has actually happened is we have now become the school children of Europe, us the Irish, and our our betters, our more mature elders in a political stroke economic sense, are the mainstream European people like the Germans and the French and whatever and what they're doing is they're patting us on the head and telling us it's all right it's okay you don't worry you, you don't know too much about money we'll show you all how to operate and, and, and we don't we obviously don't we know nothing about money I told you about our economists that whole that whole body fraternity stroke uh, university core all those faculties they should all be stood down immediately tomorrow morning it should all be stood down tomorrow morning. It would be like, <clears throat> making, making an analogy would be, imagine the engineering faculty of Ireland building a huge stadium which held millions of people, held the whole population of Ireland. And they used all the most advanced formulae and everything else. And they, at the opening ceremony, all of the people of Ireland went inside the stadium and the stadium collapsed. The stadium collapsed down. And so a tiny number of people were killed. But... Hundreds of thousands of people were injured. Imagine the fallout there would be. Because that's what's happened in an economic sense. That's an exact parallel of what has happened in an economic sense in Ireland. All of the people were suckered in to false and, 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 and lying notions by these economists. Oh, they, they supported all this. These economists, these professors of economics and, and guys with doctorates and all the rest of them, working inside the banks and working inside the public institutions and working inside the state, they all supported all this notion that this was a legitimate thing. And of course, what it's brought us, it's brought us to penury. It's brought us basically that another, a bigger, a bigger uh, grouping of people inside Europe now de facto own us 
body and soul. We're now economic slaves to the mainstream Europeans. That's what's happened. <clears throat> now, this brings me on to the second thing. The second thing is an issue that has been raised, particularly over the last couple of weeks, by a load of people. By a load, a load, a load of people. No, yeah, a good number of people. They've emailed me and contacted me, mostly emails. Now, I want to ask you, I, 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 this all, by the way, all this has happened in the last 25 months, but the lead up to it, in other words, there was a lead up of 11 years from 1987 until 2008 when all this was revealed what had actually happened but for 11 years all what was going on was hidden okay now imagine in 2008 one month before all this became public all this became public in October 2008 imagine in September of 2008 I had appeared on YouTube and I had told all the people and said there was there's not but say there was a load of people watching me on YouTube and I said Ireland was a bankrupt state the banks were, were bankrupt uh, we were going to go into a negative equity situation our economy was going to collapse we were going to have to go to the, e, uh, the European Central Bank and individual European banks to get rescued and bailed out imagine if I had said all those things people would have laughed they would have gone into the laughing room for, a, for hours and laughed it's a lunatic get him get the white coat brigade take him away but it's happened happened now we're just entering this crisis we've just entered this crisis this is only 25 months later this is we're now in November of 2010 which is 25 months later after all this became public well a lot of it became public the, the beginnings of it started to show the cracks began to show and October 2008 became visible clearly visible so 25 months later we are in, in an extraordinary situation and qu loads of people have queried me about this business about having a store of food put away a store of food and water and I say to people look uh, let me uh, I'll draw another analogy very very quickly I have a car downstairs it's an old Saab, it's eight and a half years old, not worth a light. You wouldn't get 1,500 quid for it. I wouldn't get 1,500 euros for it. I buy them when they're five or six years old. I pay about two grand for them. That's what I normally pay for them. All right? Bought this one in England. <coughs> and uh, could they look after their cars. I probably know nothing about cars or anything. Like that. know nothing about cars or money or anything like that. I know nothing about that stuff. But I bought this one in England, very, very well looked after. But it's not worth a light. But I... It, the only reason I raise it is I have to pay insurance for it every year. It cost me €368 Euros to insure it. Okay? Now, over a period of 10 years, I spend €3,600, €3,700 Euros, minimum on that. Okay? Now, the bottom line about it is, which I, I, I find it truly extraordinary, is that people would not be prepared to, to spend a couple of hundred euros that's all I'm asking that's, and, and, and I'm only suggesting this I don't care whether you do it or you don't but I think it's a sound and sensible idea it's like a like a personal insurance policy you take out and all you do is you do it over the next coming few months and every week if you can afford it you spend between 10 and 20 euros on extra food dried food and tinned food that's all you do and you put it away you can just have a bookshelf thing and you stack it all up in the bookshelf and you have pasta no potatoes none of that crap none of that shit food you have pasta rice tinned vegetables tinned protein water tinned soups all, all the basic sort of stuff so because uh, the other thing is people don't understand these I, I'm not I don't want it to turn I don't want all the situation to get ugly I want people to have a happy and a peaceful uh, life. But we're governed by a crowd of incompetent criminals. That's who governs us at the moment. They got us here. We, we didn't get... I, 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 didn't, I didn't buy any mortgages. And the vast majority of people in Ireland didn't, didn't buy any mortgages. It's a small number of people have got us here, brought us here to this. It's a terrible situation we're in. Now... It may not get worse. I'm not saying it will get worse. I'm just saying, is it not insurance? It's an insurance policy. That's all it is. Would you not spend 300 euros in your family? And give you a respite for a month? You won't be running around. Please believe me. In 1800, in the early 70s in Belfast, I saw what it was like. It only lasted about a week, 10 days. 
See, while it was going on, it was horrendous. You had all the money in the world, the money, all the money in the world didn't buy you anything. I had I a load of money at that time. I had access. I was involved and in, in politically involved in the North of Ireland. I had access to a load of money. Couldn't do nothing with the money. Money was no use. Couldn't buy you the food. Couldn't get you water. It's a hell of a situation. As I say, it only lasted a short period of time. But while it was going on, it was not very pleasant. So all I'm saying to people is, just think about yourself. Think about your family. If, you, if you're not worth spending two or three hundred euros, if you prefer to go out and spend that over a weekend, boozing up, best luck to you. But I offer it as another, don't do that. Over a period of 10 weeks, spend between 200 and 300. If you can afford it, if you can't afford it, good luck, it doesn't matter. I'm talking to the wind. I, like, I'm here, I'm not, I'm not telling people what to do. I'm just proffering advice. And you either accept it or you don't. I'm not selling anything. I don't care whether or not you, you believe me or you don't believe me. People laugh at me all the time. Every single thing that I've said, every single thing that I've said in the last two and a half years has come to, come to pass. Because you can just read it. You don't have to be a rocket scientist. I have no formal education. I have no formal degrees, tertiary degrees in economics. I'm not a fucking idiot. And I hate getting treated by these, as I say, these incompetent criminals that are on our country. They treat me like I am an idiot, like I am a fool, and I can assure you I am not either of those two things. Anyway, you have a think about those things. We're heading into deep and troubled times. Spend the money or don't. That's it. It's very simple.